Mesdames et messieurs, bonjour et bienvenue au, CR, au CNRC. Good morning, everyone, and to NRC. Je suis Geneviève Tanguy, je suis vice-présidente, pardon, aux technologies émergentes du Conseil national de recherche Canada. I would like to begin by acknowledging that we are gathered on the traditional and unceded territory of the Algonquin Anishinaabe people. To do so, recognize Indigenous people's long-standing presence in this territory. Further, this recognition and respect for Indigenous peoples and their land is key in working towards reconciliation. It's an exciting day for me and my colleagues today. We are acknowledging the amazing work being done by our researchers at the Canadian Photonic Fabrication Centre, more commonly known as the CPFC. Depuis près de 20 ans, le Centre canadien de fabrication de dispositifs photoniques est au service de l'industrie de la photonique pour une variété d'applications, notamment les télécommunications, la détection et les véhicules autonomes. J'ai maintenant l'honneur de vous présenter l'honorable Mona Fortier, présidente du Conseil du Trésor et députée de cette circonscription Ottawa-Vanier qui prendra la parole. Merci beaucoup, Geneviève. Bienvenue à Ottawa-Vanier. Hein, vous venez souvent, j'imagine. Alors, bonjour euh, tout le monde. Merci d'être euh, présent aujourd'hui. Un merci tout spécial à mon ami et collègue, euh, le ministre François-Philippe Champagne, d'être ici, dans notre belle région de la capitale nationale. Aussi euh, à ma collègue, euh, la députée d'Orléans, et également euh, coprésidente du caucus de la région de la capitale nationale, Marie-France Lalonde, merci d'être là. Et évidemment, je voudrais reconnaître Ian Stewart et Hamid Asberazé, qui sont ici également aujourd'hui. So again, thank you for joining us today and um, really excited to be part of this announcement. I will also begin by acknowledging that we are gathered in Ottawa which is on the traditional territory of the Algonquin and Anishinaabe people. Les deux dernières années ont été immensément difficiles pour les familles, les travailleurs, les entreprises et notre industrie. Et les Canadiens ont fait preuve d'une résilience exceptionnelle, d'une innovation et d'une force exceptionnelle. Et alors que nous commençons à voir les premiers signes d'un retour à une nouvelle normalité, Nous travaillons à bâtir une économie plus inclusive, plus verte, plus innovante et plus concurrentielle que jamais. It is no coincidence that we are gathered here at the Canadian Photonics Fabrication Center as this facility provides world-class engineering and manufacturing services, commercial grade prototyping and pilot run production facilities that are crucial for so many products used by Canadians in their daily lives, and their supply has direct impacts in all sectors of the economy. Today's announcement and our government's commitment to investing in and increasing the capacity of high-value manufacturers here at home will be instrumental in positioning Canada as a world leader in next-generation photonics while creating good jobs and strengthening our economy. Et c'est toujours un plaisir de recevoir le ministre de l'Innovation, des Sciences et de l'Industrie sur le campus du Centre national de recherche du Canada qui se situe à Ottawa-Vanier. Et sur ce, j'aimerais évidemment céder la parole à mon ami et collègue François-Philippe Champagne qui fera une annonce passionnante et gagnante pour l'avenir de l'industrie des semi-conducteurs et photoniques au Canada. Merci. Thank you. Bonjour tout le monde. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, actually, I was reading, and it's pretty amazing to be at the Photonics Fabrication Center. I've been wanting to come here for a long, long time, and now my dream has come true. As Minister of Industry, I can come and visit and realize the good work that's being done here, because today uh, is really about building uh, Canadian capabilities in the semiconductors through uh, some very targeted investments. We'll be having a chance to talk about that. And, and really positioning Canada as a world leader in niche semiconductors. And that's what I'm going to be 
explaining to Canadians and to all of you uh, ce matin. Alors, c'est vraiment de nous positionner comme leader mondial dans ce qu'on fait. Vous allez voir ici, il y a énormément de talent. Euh, vous allez voir, l'objectif, c'est vraiment de, de continuer de bâtir sur ce qu'on fait, mais certainement nous amener plus loin. Euh, thank you, Mona. Euh, Madame la Présidente, hein, comme on l'appelle, la Présidente du Conseil du Trésor, c'est un grand plaisir d'être ici dans Ottawa-Vanier. Et, et merci aussi parce que je peux dire aux gens qui nous regardent, uh, « You have a very strong voice uh, for Ottawa. I, I can say that uh, the President and uh, the Minister, uh, she was there for you and there for the people of Ottawa-Vanier during some of the most challenging time. And I can tell you one thing is that when the President speaks, Ottawa listens. And clearly, we in the Cabinet listened to her views, and, and she was there really to bring that human side of what we have been facing here. And I just want to say how proud I am to serve with you because, um, you know, when Mona speaks, um, really brings this, this sense, uh, the sense of urgency, the sense of action we needed for the people of Ottawa. Uh, Madame uh, la députée, Marie-France, Madame Lalonde, c'est un grand plaisir d'être uh, avec vous ici aujourd'hui. Non seulement de députée d'Orléans, mais aussi secrétaire parlementaire du ministre de l'Immigration, des Réfugiés et de la Citoyenneté. Et uh, I can say to everyone, uh, what a key role uh, when we're talking about immigration, because I was here with the team and we were talking about talent. And so I would say, as uh, Parliament Secretary, you play a key role in building our nation. So it's a real pleasure, Marie-France, uh, d'être ensemble uh, ce matin. Uh, to Jan Stewart, obviously, uh, always a pleasure, sir, to be with you. So glad that I've uh, you close to me now, and you went to help uh, in one of the most challenging times for humanity and, and landing your role at, at the Public Health Agency of Canada. But now we have you at the NRC, and it's a great uh, pleasure to have you. And Amin, thanks for joining us. Uh, you represent one of Canada's most impressive and innovative industries, and it's a pleasure to welcome you. But first of all, I'd like to say a big thank you. A thank you to all the employees of the Canadian uh, Photonics Fabrication Centre. It's really thanks to your knowledge, your expertise, and know-how uh, that we are gathered here today. There are some few employees, and I wanted you to be with us because it's really thanks to you. Uh, you make us proud, really proud. And I had the privilege of touring the facility uh, today, and I want to say thank you to you because you are at the heart of what we're doing. And if we are here this morning for an announcement, it's thanks to all the employees who make this place a special place. So thank to you, sir. Uh, for, for managing uh, the facility. Well, uh, to Canadian, before I begin, obviously, as much as we want to talk about uh, what we're going to be doing here, uh, let me say a few words uh, on the tragedy which is unfolding uh, in Ukraine. Uh, as we have seen over the past few days, uh, let us be very, very clear that the war in Ukraine is Vladimir Putin's war. And we have seen the tragic image and the suffering and um, let's be clear as well what this is about. This is really a war against democracies and rules and norms. It's a war against decency and dignity. And it's a war on the freedom of all the people of Ukraine. And I'm very proud that Canada, and actually indeed all the West and the international community, have been standing together in probably proposing one of the, I've been foreign affairs minister, it's probably the most comprehensive set of measures of of sanctions we have ever seen to, to really um, match uh, uh, the uh, horrific uh, actions we have seen and making sure that Vladimir Putin's understand that the West uh, will respond and has been responding and we will continue to respond. As you know, we've been working with allies around the globe to impose severe costs uh, on the Russian regime for the unjustified invasion. You have seen it as Canadian, this has included a number of targeted sanctions, uh, closing off our airspace to all Russian aircraft and freezing out Russian banks from the global uh, financial system. Putin and his regime will personally play for these horrific actions, and Canada is with the international community at the forefront uh, of leading that effort. Uh, we've also been there for the brave and courageous people of Ukraine, and I'm sure that everyone who's been watching the news over the last few days have been touched uh, because in a way we're all Ukrainian now as we see people fighting for their democracy. And um, not only we've provided financial assistance, but you've seen we've been providing lethal and non-lethal supplies, cyber supports, and expanded our NATO presence. 
And let me be very clear, uh, as much as my colleagues have said over the last few days, we will do everything we can uh, to help the people of Ukraine and Ukraine to defend itself in light of this horrific aggression uh, by Vladimir Putin. So ladies and gentlemen, with that introduction, which I thought was, uh, we needed to say a few words about Ukraine despite, uh, because I think it's in the hearts and the minds of all Canadians uh, these days. Uh, but bonjour tout le monde. I just had the opportunity uh, to tour the center with, and, and meet some of the great employees that live here in Ottawa Center, and I'm sure in the national capital region, um, so that uh, I can say to you all who are watching that uh, I have seen some very impressive work here. Uh, State-of-the-art technology, passionate people, changing the dynamic, making sure that we are at the cutting edge of research in, in semiconductor and photonics. So inside those labs, which are just behind me, actually, they're just behind that door, um, and all throughout the center, it is clear to me that Canada has great strength when it comes to photonics. I think that uh, the people here can tell you photonics has been in the DNA of Canadians for many, many generations. Uh, you find people that work at Nortel here who have brought some of the best and brightest people to make sure that we would continue. So behind the walls that you're seeing, just, just behind me, uh, I can think you will all agree on this, that photonics is not exactly uh, a household term. You know, it's not exactly everyone in the family would know what photonics is about. But what I can say to you at home is that this is something that we all benefit from on a daily basis. Indeed, if you think about the world we live in, the digital world we live in, uh, we rely uh, on the information that travels to the global uh, fiber optic network and throughout the photonic components. So if you have a high phone, or for that matter, I think any kind of phone these days, uh, or a tablet, or you're using any kind of electronics, just remember that photonics is a key part of that component. <clears throat> That's why that I'm proud to see that photonics is an area of real uh, Canadian strength and leadership, uh, both in academia and business, because what you see here, and we had the opportunity uh, to talk with a number of people, it's this conjunction of academia and business coming together, which really makes this place unique in the world. Because for those who are watching, just remember, uh, when you're talking about the type of semiconductor that is done here uh, in a public facility, that's the only one in North America in a very specialized type of semiconductor. So that gives us a real edge to attract talent, to make sure that we do research. But not only we can boast a Nobel uh, Prize for Dr. Uh, Donna Strikelands, and I had the opportunity to meet her, she's quite impressive, uh, in respect of her groundbreaking uh, work on early laser development, there's also a strong history of Canadian companies uh, bringing uh, optical telecommunication and expertise to the world. And one uh, critical technology in this area is, in fact, the semiconductor. And now that's a term which is a bit more familiar uh, to everyone because we've been talking uh, a lot these days about shortages of semiconductors, supply chain of semiconductors, what does it do, for example, to the automotive industry, to some other electronics? And certainly in this time of global supply chain disruptions, we wanted as Canada, in our own way, uh, making sure that we would be investing uh, to uh, address, uh, in a way, uh, the challenge we've seen with respect to uh, global chip shortages. And um, we've seen that this has been, obviously it's a global phenomenon, it's been affecting the production of cars, like I mentioned, uh, those who might be doing some gaming, uh, the game consoles, some home appliances, and so much more. That's why I've been working with our colleagues in the United States and some uh, of our trusted partner in Europe to build a more resilient and integrated supply chain when it comes to uh, not only semiconductors, but critical minerals and electric vehicles, life sciences and defense, I think we're seeing as the world is shifting in front of our eyes, that we need to, to build more robust uh, supply chains with our trusted partner. And this morning, today, what we're doing in Ottawa Vanier is a step in that direction. The investment we're doing, quarter of a billion almost, that we're gonna be talking in terms of investment is a step in the direction of more resiliency, more robust supply chain, more cooperation with our trusted partner. So, comme vous l'avez vu, on, on va travailler évidemment avec l'industrie, euh, avec le centre ici, mais avec nos partenaires à travers le monde, 
pour s'assurer de bâtir des chaînes d'approvisionnement plus résilientes, particulièrement euh, dans les semi-conducteurs, parce qu'on sait que pour assurer euh, la prospérité des Canadiens, mais aussi la, la sécurité des Canadiens, on a besoin de développer des chaînes d'approvisionnement plus robustes, et ce matin, ça en est un bel exemple. So, to that end, I am extremely proud uh, to be here with Marie-France, uh, uh, Mona, which is the president of the Treasury Board, and colleagues, and the employees, because really, I see their smile behind the masks. I can see them in the room. I wish you could be with me. But I'm really proud to announce that we're making two uh, major investments, because when we come to Ottawa Vanier, we don't come with one good news. We come with two good news. And this morning, it's all, it's, one thing is about the photonics and the Canadian semi-conductor uh, industry, our domestic industry. So first, we are going to be providing $150 million uh, for projects that will enhance our domestic development and manufacturing of semiconductors. I know that people at home may question and say, uh, what is $150 million in the great scheme of the production of semiconductors? But let me remind Canadians that we have a niche capability when it comes to manufacturing. What you're seeing behind these walls is really niche ar around the world. And we have a total ecosystem in Canada of innovators, of entrepreneurs. And you'll hear about one, which is very proud that we're doing this announcement, which we've been working uh, with. And so this is about consolidating, expanding, scaling uh, what we do best here in Canada. And we know that in order to succeed, we need to work uh, with the private sector uh, to uh, be successful. And you'll hear uh, from one of those investors and entrepreneur. And, and I want Canadians to know that this is only the beginning because obviously we want to do much, much more. But we need to start that here this morning because that's one of the jewel we have in Canada is the Photonic Center. And that's why this targeted investment will help to address semiconductor disruption issues and really allow uh, Canada to build on its natural strengths. It will build additional Canadian capabilities, and that's what we want to do. Now, for the second good news for the resident of Ottawa Vanier, and indeed, I would think people in Ontario and the whole region and, and indeed Canada, I am pleased to announce that today we are investing an additional $90 million right there at the Canadian Photonics Fabrication Center. And uh, this $90 million is very much needed. We saw some piece of equipment that are going to be coming to keep uh, making sure we're state of the art. Uh, because over the last two decades, uh, this center has established itself as a world-class, which we call a one-stop shop. Mm -hmm. Really, people come here, they do research, they do production, uh, proof of concept. And this is making us unique around the world. A and I want people to understand that when they come here, I was talking with the director of the production, uh, people from all over the world come here uh, to test and to make sure that their product, uh, what we call prototyping uh, in engineering and manufacturing. So this investment will help uh, position Canada as a critical global supplier of niche semiconductor technologies, and that's where I think uh, we can make a difference as Canada. So with these two announcements, which are close to a quarter of a billion, I want Canadians to know that we're focused on building our existing facilities, capabilities, and expertise, and also to grow our domestic sector and this particular industry, which is very intensive in research and innovation. But again, like I said before, this is just the beginning uh, of our investment in the semiconductor landscape. Uh, we intend, we have plans to be bigger and bolder and certainly uh, having discussion with some of the largest manufacturers in the world uh, to make the case for Canada. I think Canada offers unparalleled stability, predictability, uh, the rule of law, uh, the renewable energy, the access to water, which I think would make uh, this place a very attractive uh, uh, jurisdiction to invest. So obviously at the same time that we're supporting uh, high value manufacturing here in Canada, we'll try to continue to address um, and make sure that we can have uh, a number of investments coming uh, to Canada. So friend, these investments are all about uh, strategic immediate action with a long-term vision. We understand in a world which is fast moving and fast changing, we needed to take immediate action. This morning is all about that. So three words to finish. I would say let's seize the moment. Let's be ambitious and passionate as I've seen with the people who work here at the center. And uh, let's together position Canada as a global leader to succeed in the 21st century economy. So with that, I'll be happy to turn over to Ian Stewart, I think, which is gonna come after me. 
Yann is going to be telling you more about the announcement this morning. Merci tout le monde. À plus tard. It's difficult to follow the two ministers who have so well described what we do here and so well described why it's important to Canada and its future. Uh, I want to say a, a very large welcome uh, to our member from Orleans, to our member from here, and also the President of the Treasury Board, as well as to our minister for whom we report, uh, Minister Champagne. Uh, bienvenue, parce que c'est vraiment important d'avoir l'occasion de célébrer quelque chose spécial comme uh, 90 millions de dollars à investir dans cette uh, lieu ici. So merci beaucoup pour ça. Um, uh, as uh, was well explained, uh, this is uh, our center. It's Canada's center. It's a public asset that's available to companies to come and work up their projects. We help them develop what they're trying to do. We help them bring it to market. And in some instances, we're able to support them once they're in the market. And we're very blessed today to have Hamid here, who's going to talk a little bit about that relationship that we have. Um, your investment will enable us to support the next generation of companies. That's our hope. So, c'est quelque chose à noter, parce que le CNRC a pour mission de faire progresser le savoir, de sou uh, soutenir les politiques publiques et de travailler avec les entreprises pour favoriser l'innovation. C'est notre vision à long terme. Trois rôles. Le troisième rôle, évidemment, travailler avec les entreprises, c'est le plus grand de nos rôles. Mais quand même, L'avancement d'innovation, c'est vraiment au cours de CNRC depuis longtemps. Nous adoptons deux grands méthodes pour faire ça. Uh, premièrement, uh, les spécialistes travaillent sur le projet de petites ou des grandes entreprises uh, pour uh, lancer le nouvel produit, mais en même temps, grâce au uh, PERI, uh, le programme uh, d'aide à la recherche industrielle, PERI au Québec, uh, nous travaillons avec les entreprises PME uh, partout au Canada. Uh, in both senses, we are a truly national enterprise. Um, so in this case, CPFC, the Canadian Photonics Fabrication Center, is a hub, as the minister well explained. And uh, we do advanced research. We do pilot scale manufacturing. Uh, we are the only pure play compound semiconductor fabrication center in North America. It's special. And uh, it has a long tail. As the minister mentioned, it goes all the way back to Nortel. And in fact, some of the stuff we're blessed to have and some of our colleagues we're blessed to work with go all the way back to Nortel, so a long train. Um, so we are a unique supplier. And uh, when COVID closed Ottawa, you, everybody remembers March 18th, 19th, 20th, mm -hmm. we were experiencing the pandemic. Uh, we were closing places. We closed this place. It lasted closed maybe, I'm going to say two weeks, maybe two weeks. And then the company started writing uh, the Minister of Industry at that time saying, please open your facility back up. We actually need your products. Uh, you're hurting our bottom line. And so we worked very carefully. Uh, we were adhering to the highest levels of safeties and standards, and the, the team here is the team that made that happen. How do we safely open up in a time of COVID? So we did, uh, and we were able again be the partner that we need to be for our companies with whom we work. So I'm very proud of that. That was a hard work, and we have continued safely throughout the pandemic, continuing to operate. So I want to say again, thank you so much to the government. Thank you so much for this vote of confidence. It is, as you say, for the future, and it's something that uh, we're very proud to be able to be part of. Merci, monsieur. How do you follow these two gentlemen? <laughs> well, going back to the people, uh, first of all, um, I'd like to thank Ian, Geneviève, Velko, and the entire NRC team for their uh, partnership over the past decade with Rhinovus. Uh, and also the Canadian Compound Semiconductor. It's not an easy term to explain, as uh, Mr. Champagne was, uh, was speaking about, but uh, we're delighted that your organization has been able to uh, um, bring the strategic importance that you have into the ecosystem to a level uh, to warrant this level of participation from Government of Canada today. You are the custodian of a critical piece of Canadian innovation history. And we look forward to growing our partnership together uh, with you in the coming years. Minister Champagne, on behalf of the Canadian 
innovators in the semiconductor and the compound semiconductor industry, I would like to thank you for your commitment to this strategic industry. As a Canadian-owned and operated uh, enterprise, Ranovis has invested over $125 million in the intellectual property that reduces the greenhouse gas emission of data centers globally. Data centers play a critical role in today's data-driven economy. With the exponential growth of AI and machine learning workloads, along with growth in remote work, Web 3.0, Metaverse, data centers will continue to be uh, of strategic importance in the future of humanity and our globe and our planet. The information inside the data center uh, travels using optical communication. Uh, 25 years ago, a Canadian-owned company was the leader in the optical communication technologies. The alumni from, uh, from that company have worked very hard to maintain and nourish those capabilities in Canada. So the talent is here. We haven't lost them. Today's announcement sends a clear message to that talent that the government of Canada understands the importance of the intellectual property and global leadership in strategic industries. My hope is that the Canadian talent will create new Canadian-owned companies and get Canada back to the podium. To that effect, we're announcing a $45 million investment in the next generation of optical communication technologies to address the emerging AI and machine learning workloads with our first customer announcements later this week. We recognize that an ecosystem is more than one company and look forward to continue our work with other Canadian companies to strengthen the critical mass of intellectual property in Canada. Thank you again for this. I uh, sincerely feel that this is one of the major steps that the government has taken. This gem here at NRC has been a hidden gem mm -hmm. for many years. The efforts that uh, the team has done here under stewardship of Aiden, uh, uh, <laughs> Ian, Geneviève, Velko, and the rest of the team has been exceptional through the COVID time and also before. So um, I'm just, just thankful for, uh, for you understanding how critical this is and we're gonna do our best to collaborate with the ecosystem here and try to make it even having a much bigger impact in the future. Thank you very much. Thanks very much. Merci à vous tous et je crois qu'on n'a pas nommé la dernière personne. Alors, uh, il est le CEO, he's the president of Renovus. A uh, company that's working with uh, the CPFC and has been working with the CPFC for a while. So, thank you very much for me. And now we will go to the question period uh, with the media. Thank you. Merci. We will now take questions from the telephone lines. If you have a question and you are using a speakerphone, please lift your handset before making your selection. If you have a question, please press star 1 on the device's keypad. There will be a brief pause while the participants register. Nous allons maintenant passer à la période de questions. Si vous utilisez le téléphone main libre, s'il vous plaît, soulevez le combiné avant d'effectuer votre sélection. Si vous désirez poser une question, veuillez s'il vous plaît appuyer sur les touches étoile 1 de votre appareil. Il y aura un court délai vous permettant de vous enregistrer dans la file d'attente pour la période de questions. The first question, la première question, is from Stéphane Roland, La Presse Canadienne. Please go ahead, à vous la parole. Oui, bonjour, Monsieur Champagne, merci de, de prendre mes questions. Bonjour, Monsieur Roland, euh, vous allez bien? Demander... Oui, je vais bien, merci, et vous? Ben oui, bienvenue aux joyaux du, du Canada, hein? c'est ça qui me venait en tête, là. Vous êtes avec nous euh, virtuellement dans un de nos joyaux pays. Allez-y. OK. Merci. Euh, ma première question, euh, par rapport au, au volet de 150 millions de l'annonce euh, dans le fond, je me demandais quelles étaient les prochaines étapes, à quel moment les, les sommes seraient versées au projet, qu'est-ce qu qui doit survenir là, par la suite de, de l'annonce? Merci d'abord d'être avec nous parce que je pense que c'est une annonce importante. On en a parlé des semi-conducteurs. 
euh, sur les chaînes d'approvisionnement, sur l'impact dans nos vies au quotidien. Hein. Ça, c'est un enjeu au quotidien. Euh, ce qu'on fait avec le 150 millions de dollars, Amit, je pense que le, le bien décrit, c'est un appel à projet. C'est-à-dire qu'on sait qu'on a un écosystème à travers le pays. On a plus de 100 entreprises qui sont peut-être moins connues du grand public, mais qui font partie de cet écosystème-là, soit de recherche, soit d'innovation. Et ce qu'on veut dire avec le message d'aujourd'hui, c'est que moi, c'est comme un premier paiement, c'est-à-dire qu'on met 150 millions de dollars pour justement euh, solliciter des projets qui pourraient nous permettre d'accélérer la croissance de l'industrie au pays, voire même de nouvelles entreprises se lancer dans ce secteur-là d'activité qui est prometteur et qui est fort en innovation, en recherche et développement. Et comme vous le voyez ici, dans le centre de, de recherche qu'on a ici, le centre de la photonique, c'est vraiment un outil important pour que des entreprises canadiennes, parce que euh, le président du Conseil national de recherche le disait, le fait qu'on a une institution publique, la seule en Amérique du Nord, qui permette à ces gens-là de faire de la recherche, de faire du développement, de faire de l'innovation, je pense que ça nous donne une carte euh, de plus, un avantage significatif pour justement accélérer la croissance de ces PME-là à travers le pays. Puis une petite précision là, par rapport à votre Allez commentaire avant ma prochaine question. Euh, la, la, la peine de sollicitation, c'est combien de temps que les entreprises ont pour soumettre euh, leur, leur dossier? Bien, évidemment, on, on, on fait l'annonce ce matin. Et inquiétez-vous pas, c'est juste la porte qui vient de s'ouvrir. Si vous entendez, euh, ne vous inquiétez pas, ne vous inquiétez pas, euh, ça c'est un signal d'alarme pour la porte. Euh, mais ce que je voulais vous dire, évidemment, on lance ce grand défi-là ce matin euh, aux entreprises. Et évidemment, on sera en contact avec eux pour les accompagner, mais je vous dirais que ça va se faire durant les prochains mois parce qu'on va aller rapidement. Tu sais, quand on disait euh, agir euh, stratégiquement maintenant avec une vision à long terme, l'idée ce matin, c'est de lancer ça et, et je dirais un peu de galvaniser l'industrie autour de ce qu'on est capable de faire au Canada. Moi, je le disais, au Canada, on est chanceux parce qu'on a une industrie de niche en semi-conducteur et c'est ça qui va nous permettre d'attirer aussi des investissements étrangers parce qu'en même temps, avec mes collègues, je parle à des investisseurs étrangers pour voir ce qu'on peut faire de plus. Alors, on part de ce qu'on a, on l'accélère, on le grandit, on le fait connaître au monde et comme ça, ça va nous permettre d'accélérer évidemment le développement dans ce secteur-là. Thank you. Merci. Once again, please. Press star 1 on the device's keypad if you have a question. De nouveau, n'hésitez pas à faire étoile 1 sur votre appareil pour toute question. On va donner trois secondes. Écoutez, je pense que, à moins que j'entende une voix, il n'y en a pas. Écoutez, je pense que pour l'opérateur qui est avec nous, ça veut dire que euh, vous, euh, ça va nous faire plaisir de répondre. S'il y a d'autres questions, évidemment. Je vous remercie d'avoir été là. Thanks for being with us this morning. And thanks again to the employees of the center, uh, because you're really, if this is a jewel, we're blessed to have people like you to make it alive, to make sure that we have the talent, the expertise, and know-how. Amit said it. It's all about the people aspect of it. So I would say to the young people who are listening with us this morning, go into STEM studies. There's amazing careers that you can have here in the Ottawa region. And here, uh, we would welcome you in one of the jewel of Canada, which is just uh, behind the wall here. So, merci tout le monde. Merci d'avoir été là. I wish you a very nice day. Merci. Merci beaucoup, Monsieur le Ministre. Nous sommes très heureux, effectivement. Madame la Ministre, Madame la Députée, Monsieur le Président et Monsieur Radadé. Euh, merci beaucoup à tous. On va maintenant passer à la période de fausse. Si vous voulez bien vous joindre à moi. Uh, thank you very much. And again, congratulations to all the employees at the CPFC and uh, all the employees at the Advanced Electronics and Photonics Research Center. Thank you very much.